So far away, Lucas. Favorite Lara Croft moment? Um, maybe when she explodes for putting in the nude code. That's a strong one. Also very relevant. <laughs> Lara Croft is arguably one of the most famous fictional women in the entire world, and as we've discussed on this very channel before, she's accomplished a lot in her storied gaming career. However, the topic of today's video is something she did here in the real world. Mainly, be fired for posing nude for Playboy. Okay, Carl, like, you know Lara Croft isn't a real person, right? I do know that Lara Croft isn't a real person, so what I just said requires an explanation. And that explanation allows me to talk about perhaps one of the strangest careers tangentially related to the world of gaming, being Lara Croft. What do you mean by being Lara Croft? Well, almost since the inception of the Tomb Raider games, Lara Croft has been featured in a lot of the marketing material, um, mainly for two reasons. Just let that joke sit. <laughs> There's the requisite breast joke for a Lara Croft video out of the way, perfect. And that's all well and good, but marketing departments quickly notice that, yeah, it'd be great if Lara could physically interact with the public. You know, the public who love her so much. The problem is she's not real. So what they did is they began hiring glamour models to just dress up like Lara Croft for events and things like that, um, which probably resulted in some very, very awkward <laughs> moments because I've been to a convention or two in my time, and I'll be honest, those models that they hire to dress up like gaming characters do not look like they're having a good time. Like even cosplayers who do it for a living don't look like they're having a good time. <laughs> like when those creepy handsy men come around. So I imagine that back in those very, very early days, the glamour models probably didn't really have that much fun being Lara Croft. It's like, what am I doing again? Well, you're playing a video game character. Okay, and what does that entail? We'll put on these booty shorts and this tiny tank top and pose with these two pistols. <laughs> okay, sure. And like, I just made me feel so bad for whoever those early women were who asked to play Lara Croft. But the character eventually became so popular that it became essential for them to hire a full-time Lara Croft. Oh which my is, God. Like, I shit you not, a very good job with a lot of perks and benefits, some of which we'll get into in a moment. But the main thing that these professional Lara Crofts have to do is be in shape enough and acrobatic enough to believably be able to do everything Lara Croft does in the games, which, remember, includes things like diving through the air while firing two pistols and doing a <laughs> full perfect backflip from a standing position. Yeah. And then explode. That's the best thing she's like. That's the most impressive thing Lara can do, isn't it? Just like the p p the perfect Captain Falcon backflip and then explodes. Like, can you imagine that at the Olympics? Like, Lara Croft is there, like doing the gymnastics floor routine, and she just does the thing she has to do for that cheat, which is like jump side to side, perfect backflip, a roll forward, and then does a bat an arcing perfect backflip, lands on her toes, T poses for dominance, and explodes. <laughs> so, what would the world do? Like. This is the great, like, gymnastics can no longer exist as a sport because it has been completed. I bet in, like, most of these glamour models couldn't do perfect backflips. Yeah, not while holding two pistols and firing them at tigers, no. Yeah. So, um, in recent years, it has been mandatory for all prospective Lara Crofts to go to Lara Croft boot camp, which includes, I shit you not, weapons handling training with the SAS, tactical motorbike riding training, <laughs> and a bunch of other cool shit like that. So they have a basic understanding of the things Lara Croft is able to do in the games. And in addition to all of that, they also have to have elocution lessons to speak with Lara Croft's trademark, very posh British accent. Kind of wish they'd got Angelina Jolie to take that course. Oh, yeah. Her accent in those live action movies is not fucking very good. Was it programmed to stop before it took my head off? Oh, well, that would be a uh, no. Hmm. Okay, Carl, but what is this all about with like Laura Croft? going nude and getting fired? Well, um, this story takes place in the mid to late 90s when a lady called Nell McAndrew um, was the official Lara Croft for that period. And um, as I mentioned, she did like, you know, perform the role quite admirably. She went to all the training sessions. Um, she was like, she got really, really buff because Lara Croft got to be buff. And uh, she was promptly fired when she posed for Playboy. And uh, she points out that originally, uh, I believe it's Crystal Dynamics and Eidos were fine 
with Nell McAndrews doing this and fine with her posing for Playboy, it's like, yeah, you're a model, it's your job. I, if you want to go pose for a magazine, that's entirely up to you. But they were a bit annoyed when the issue of Playboy McAndrews posed for came out and it had on the cover, Lara Croft, hot nude pictorial. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, because Playboy couldn't resist like cashing in on the nascent sex appeal of Lara Croft. And they were there going, well, we literally have the girl who's paid to be Lara Croft and we've got her naked in this magazine. How can we not capitalize on that? And the company who owned the Lara Croft IP were very, very annoyed about that, somewhat understandably. It's like, yeah, this is a video game for kids. We want to get those LucasAid dollars. It's really hard to get those when we've got like, a big front page story about our model being naked and using our name and our IP for that. We maybe shouldn't be like, maybe we should stop this. And like, do you remember that weird period in the 90s where Lara Croft was just advertising LucasAid? So people who may not remember, like in the 90s, Lara Croft was massive and there were um, industry experts who were like, will Lara Croft become a virtual celebrity? Like the first virtual celebrity slash supermodel? because they use Lara Croft to advertise LucasAid very famously, but um, they also put her on like albums and stuff. Like Lara Croft had an album, I think. Oh my God. Where one of those models who played her released a song like, as Lara Croft and it's terrible. It's like all these weird things they did to try and make Lara real. And like you fast forward to today and it's like, she can't even get into Sony Smash. Well, Carl, I just Googled, like, Laura Croft Lucas Aid. Okay, yeah. And not only did I find out that they advertised it as Laura's Aid. Laura's Aid? Oh, I want some Laura's Aid. I'd drink that. When I found pictures of it, they also did the same thing for the Tomb Raider movie that came out in, like, 2016 or whatever. Oh, they didn't. Did they get Angelina Jolie to pose a Lucas Aid? No, no, like, the new one. Oh, no, that's even worse. Because she doesn't look like Laura Croft at all. <laughs> so they That's put Laura's that... Aid back on the shelves. Oh god, I, I would have bought that, I'll be honest, because I, I don't like Lucas Aid, but I'd buy some Lara's Aid. <laughs> because I really do miss the old school Lara Croft where she'd wear the stupid Morpheus sunglasses. Oh god. And the completely pointless dual wielding of pistols that have infinite ammo. I miss the Lara who would backflip through her front room and lock her butler in a freezer. That's my Lara. <laughs> yeah. Not this woman who's screaming about slitting a deer's throat and then getting extra um, experience points for headshotting soldiers. But that's besides the point because the main topic of today's video is Nell McAndrew. And as you might imagine, given the title of today's video, she was promptly fired from her role as Lara Croft. Something she really didn't give that much of a shit about because according to her, she was acting under the assumption that they'd replace her the following year anyway because they always did that when they released a new game. And when she was asked, did you at least have fun playing Lara Croft? She went, yeah, being Lara was awesome. I got to go to the gym every single day and got to travel the world for free, which <laughs> admittedly sounds like something Lara Croft would do. So, far away, Lucas, this video has been, in a roundabout way, a discussion about a very famous video game woman. So, in that vein, favourite video game woman, I suppose. Or um, ones that you'd like or admire for their, you know, sick-ass skills, like Lara and her backflipping while shooting tiger shit. One um, that I always like to, well, a relatively recent one that I like to bring up. Okay. Because Laura's pretty badass, but now a newer like PlayStation mascot that is like Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn. I've not played that game, but um, I cannot not look at her and just see uh, Freya from God of War. Oh, okay, yeah. It's because it's um, like red-haired lady with like, you know, white girl dreadlocks in and a bow and arrow. But uh, yeah, um, from what I've seen of that game though, Aloy is pretty badass. Like, she's taking out Robo T-Rexes with a bow and arrow. Exactly. <laughs> like, I'm gonna put some respect on someone who does that. So oh, what do you do for a living? Yeah, I hunt T-Rexes. Well, that's pretty dangerous. Yeah, especially when they're robots, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fucking awesome. Well, I'm gonna go a bit more old school. And you know the, the one I'm gonna pick, Lucas, and it is Samus Aran. Obviously, yeah. I, I adore that character and that game and that franchise. And um, there's just something about the idea because uh, when I found out like years and years later that, oh yeah, canonically she's six foot three. <laughs> yeah. She's just, the, and she, like, she weighs like 200 pounds because she's been enhanced by the Chozo to have denser muscles and bones. So she's basically just this solid brick wall of woman who kicks the shit out of a giant space dragon every other week. 
Oh, man. And walks around in a bulletproof suit with um, uh, nuclear generators in the shoulders. It's like, yeah, I can see why this person's so iconic and why they're so feared across the universe. And I will never, ever stop being mad about Other M for what it did to the character. Oh, God. And if people are wondering, Carl, why you're so pissed off about Other M, well, one, in that game, for no reason, they made Samus five foot three. They made her a foot shorter, so she's shorter than all the men. Yay. And they also made her completely obedient to uh, figures of authority, including the pseudo-father figure. So now they turned one of the strongest, most badass women in all of video games, a woman who literally saves the universe on a day off and doesn't listen to anybody. And her backstory is, I quit the military because I was sick of people telling me what the fuck to do. I'm on my own now. Spends the entire game listening to a man and crying. And it's like, oh, God, fuck you. Like, who is it who made that game again? Team Ninja, right? Team Ninja. Fuck you, Team Ninja. Also, I, I hate... Hate the fact they put Samus in high heels in that game. Oh, God. Because I, uh, one of my favourite Metro games of all time is um, Zero Mission. Mm -hmm. And in that game, what well, Samus wears, the Zero suit, so named because it has zero weight, allowing Samus to basically flex the full extent of her physical capabilities, which is why she's more acrobatic in it. And one of the design notes, because I had um, like the art book for that game discussing it, and one of the design prompts for that costume is... It has no high heels. And I distinctly recall a piece of artwork of her in the suit where she's wearing heels and they're circled, under which some hero had written, Samus doesn't wear high heels. She's a fucking bounty hunter. <laughs> like, she's not, on the, she's not on the catwalk. She's kicking ass. Yeah. Fucking get rid of them. And then they put them in to other M when she's in the zero suit. It's like, for fuck's sake. Yeah, God damn it. Just because they wanted to sexualize a character who doesn't need to have that done to them because it's not part of their character. It's like, oh God, I fucking hate what, when men make video games, they do that to them. It's like, um, we're playing, is it Resident Evil 4 at the moment? We are, yes. On your channel. Uh, it probably, it's probably done now by the time this video goes out. And I remember I singled out that part where you're playing as Ashley Graham. Mm -hmm. And throughout the game, like, you know, she's shown as being quite helpless. Because uh, she's... Relatively. Relatively. And then you have one moment where you play as her and you actually get to see... No, she's resourceful in her own way. She's just not Leon fucking Kennedy. <laughs> so obviously she can't be like suplexing Ganados unless you play the one version of the game where she can do that. And then there's a completely unavoidable moment where you have to dodge a falling axe and she falls onto the floor and the camera pans down and gives you an upskirt shot. And I'm like, for fuck's sake. Yeah. It's, and it's completely unavoidable. You have to see this moment. There is no way to avoid that moment. It's like, why? And it just makes me uncomfortable to think like they couldn't help themselves. They had to put the upskirt shot in. 